Oh no. Do you hear that? That's the sound of a printer that needs help. But I've got everything we need to get it up and running again. Let's go. Well, it's just what I was expecting. You can hear the belts creak and crackle from across the room. There's black dust above the motors. It's time for us to go ahead and replace the sliding blocks, the short belts, and get started. All we'll need is our sliding block pack, short belts, and our two millimeter hex head screwdriver. Another way to check and see if your belts need to be replaced is to run your fingers along them. Good belts should not be shedding on you. Let's get to work on replacing these. Okay, so to get these belts removed, we're going to need a two millimeter hex head screwdriver. Let's get started. To make sure we're on the same page, here's some of the common terms you'll hear me using. We have pulleys with the set screws that hold them in place, the spacers, motor belts or short belts, and sliding blocks. Now we'll go ahead and open the doors and tilt the sliding blocks to get the print head shafts out. I like to start with the back block, which then makes it easy to get the front one out. Next, we'll do the left and the right. Tilt the sliding block with your hands and pop the print head shaft out of the sliding block. Set the print head off to the side, out of the way. We're going to remove the bottom set of rods first, which are the ones that run back to front on the printer. This will be easier. However, I don't have enough space behind the printer in this orientation, so we're going to go ahead and turn it around because I'm going to need plenty of space behind the printer in order to get the rods out through the back. All right, we'll open the doors and we're going to go ahead and pull on the rear sliding block until we've got it in alignment so that we can get the screwdriver into the set screw on the pulley on the lower rod in the back right. Now there's two pulleys in that corner, so you're going to want to make sure to get both of them. Here's the first one. Adjust again if needed. And go ahead and loosen the second one as well. All right, come up to the front right corner and we're going to go ahead and loosen that set screw pulley as well. Now you can go ahead and grip the rod and slide the whole thing backwards. Be careful not to lose the spacer, but it happens. Try and grab the pulleys and the spacers as you remove the perimeter shafts. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the left side. On this side, there's only two pulleys. So go ahead and unscrew the set screw on the first pulley. Then go ahead and do the one in the back. You'll slide the rod out through the back just the same as you did on the other side. We'll do the same thing on the rear rod next. First, we're going to go ahead and unscrew the set screw on the pulley in the back right corner. Then do the same on the set screw on the pulley in the back left corner. Now go ahead and slide the whole rod out sideways. Make sure to keep a handle on your spacers and your pulleys as you pull it out so that you don't lose any. We'll go ahead and do the same thing at the front. Unscrew the set screw in the front right corner and the front left corner. Then we can go ahead and pull the rod out. If you find it's a little more difficult to get this rod out, don't be surprised. 
you don't have as much space to grip because the LED profile sits in the top panel right at the front there. So you can push your screwdriver in and have it help pop it out the end if it's getting stuck. Make sure to gather up any spacers or pulleys that got away and you can go ahead and pull the rod the rest of the way out now that you were able to get it started. Next, we'll pop off the corner covers that cover your motors so that we can get to those short belts or motor belts. They're just a little push fit connection. Just tug on them at the corner and they'll pop right out. Hold on to the X motor in the back right corner and make sure to grip it firmly with one hand. Use the other hand to unscrew the four screws holding it on from the back panel. You can go ahead and set the motor, motor belt, and motor spacer down just inside the printer. We'll do the same thing again on the left side where the Y motor is attached to the left panel. Unscrew all four screws and make sure to carefully hold on to the motor on the inside so that it doesn't drop down and damage anything on the bed. We've got our sliding blocks, our short belts, our spacers, and our pulleys, and our two millimeter screwdriver. We're ready to get everything put back together. I apologize if it looks a bit awkward. Normally I would do this sitting in front of the machine, but that would block your view. We'll start with the motor belt, double pulley, and the long perimeter rod. We'll put the short belt on the larger half of the double pulley, put that on the side towards the panel, and we're going to line it up against the frame bearing on the inside of the printer. Then we can go ahead and slide the perimeter shaft in. Grab one of the 714 belts and go ahead and we're going to hang it on the pulley on the smaller side of the double pulley that has the short belt we just installed. Take one of the 920 belts and spear it onto the perimeter rod. Now you've got your short belt, your 714, and your 920 all on this rod. We'll push the perimeter rod in a little further. Take one of the 8 millimeter pulleys, hang your 714 belt off of it, and slide that on. Keep the wide part of the pulley towards the wall of the printer. Add the 8 millimeter spacer onto the end. And we're going to go ahead and slide the perimeter rod in further. Make sure to hold the double pulley down at the end so that it doesn't pop off. Now reach on both sides of the printer. Make sure that the rod is centered between the two side panels. Slide the other long perimeter rod in through the front. Take one of the 8mm spacers, pop it onto the rod, then take one of your 8mm pulleys with the smooth side towards the panel and hook it over your 714 belt. Then slip it onto the rod. Take your last 920 sliding block and spear it through the perimeter shaft. We're going to do the same thing again on the right side with an 8mm pulley and an 8mm spacer and the smooth side towards the panel. Touch the side panels where the rods are to make sure that they're flush with the ends on both sides. You don't want one sticking out because then it's probably going to fall out on the inside. Next we're going to align the axes. So we're going to take the back corner here and pull the pulley flush against the wall and tighten the screw down. Next we'll do the same thing in the front right corner. It's important to do opposite corners so that we've got one tight screw on each rod and on each belt. Now we're going to go ahead and the sliding blocks can be moved independently. You want to go ahead and drag both blocks all the way to the front of the machine or the back of the machine. I think the front's a little easier.
Now they're aligned. Next, we're going to go ahead and tighten the back right screw. So make sure you have the pulley pushed all the way up to the wall before you tighten the set screw. Check for play on the axles. If it's moving a little bit, then we're going to go ahead, loosen the screw, push the pulley to the edge, and tighten it back down again. Now we'll do the same thing on the front left corner, making sure that the pulley is all the way against the wall and that the set screw is tightened down all the way. This should then leave us with the front perimeter rod and back perimeter rod both tight and the belts aligned. Next we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the perimeter shafts that run front to back on the printer. So we'll take the shorter rod and we're going to slide it in through the hole in the back. You don't want to send it very far through because we're going to need to put some things on it. You want the 25 millimeter spacer and the 3 millimeter spacer. And a pulley. Slide both spacers onto the rod. Then take your pulley with the wide end towards the outside, hook it over the belt, and pop it onto the rod. Slide the rod through until we can spear the sliding block. Make sure to push the pulley back if it starts to wander. Then we're going to finish this rod with another pulley and a 3 millimeter spacer. Again, the wide side of the pulley always goes towards the panel. Hook the sliding block over the pulley, cap it off with the spacer, and push the rod all the way through. Okay, one more rod to go. We're going to take the last short rod and we're going to put it in on the right side through the back of the printer. Take the large pulley that's left, the one that's not like all the others, and your short belt. And we're going to go ahead and pop the belt onto that pulley and slide it with the big part up against the back panel. That way the short belt is as close to the panel as possible. Next, we're going to take a 10 millimeter spacer or a 3 millimeter spacer and an 8 millimeter spacer. Depending on when it was built, it might have either of those. Next, take your single pulley, hook it over the sliding block, and slide that over the rod. At this point, the rear belt should be pretty taut. Make sure that you don't have the rod too far in or it's going to be hard to stretch the belt that far. If you need to, you can always back the rod back out slightly. Spear the perimeter rod through the sliding block on the right hand side there. Then we'll take our last spacer and our last pulley. Again, as always, you want the smooth wide side towards the panel when you hook it over the belt. Pop it over the rod. Slide your 3 millimeter spacer in place and go ahead and get the rod seated in the rest of the way into the bearing on the front panel and all the sliding blocks will look tight. Okay, we're nearly done. Now we want to make sure that the rod is all the way forward to the front panel as deep as it can go. And we're going to go ahead and just like we did on the other ones, move the sliding block so that we can get to the pulley set screw. going to want to tighten both set screws in this back right corner. I recommend checking for play on the axle before you do the second one so you don't have to redo two.
Okay. Now go ahead and do the front corner. Again, make sure the rod is all the way tight against the front of the printer. Move the front and back sliding blocks all the way to one side. You can do the left or the right, whichever you prefer. That way we know that they're in alignment with each other. Then carefully move one until you can get to the opposite pulley. In this case, we're going to get to the set screw in the front right corner since we already tightened the front left corner. Double check one more time for play on the axles. Then we'll go ahead and do the back left corner. Okay, your sliding blocks are installed, everything's tight. Now we're going to take our motor spacer and our motor screws and we're going to go ahead and push the screws through from the outside and hang the motor spacer off of it. Go ahead and do that with at least two of the screws. You can do it with all four if you want. Now we'll take the motor, make sure to hook the motor over the belt so that it catches on the pulley where it needs to grip. And line it up and screw the screws in slightly so that the motor spacer, screws, and motor are all connected. Now we want to leave it loose still. With the motor attached by at least two screws still only loosely secured, we can go ahead and take the cable and wrap it underneath the cable hook. Just to keep it out of the way. Now we're going to go ahead and apply pressure to the motor so that the short belt will be tight and we can tighten all four of the motor screws on the outside. It's very very important that the tension on the motor belt be tight. Keep the tension on the motor while tightening all four screws. We're going to go ahead and do the same process all over again with the X motor, which attaches onto the back panel in the exact same way that the Y motor does on the other side. Slide the long print head shaft into the print head going left to right and the short one going front to back. And then drop the print head in at an angle carefully and so you don't catch on the belts. Go ahead and seat the print head shafts in the sliding blocks, making sure not to have the blocks be tilted. They should be straight up and down and they should click into place. Take your cable cover and pop it back in on one corner. I would start at the bottom and work it in inward. Make sure that the tabs go all the way in. Press it in, it should be a pretty clean fit. Then go ahead and do the other side. Listen to that. It's so quiet. We changed out the sliding blocks and the short belts, and now this is a very happy printer.